Hello everyone. I'm Herc. I'm producer of War of the Visions Final Fantasy Brave XBS Global Version. And hello everybody. I am Justin, the community manager of War of the Visions Final Fantasy Brave XBS Global Version. War of the Visions Final Fantasy Brave XBS is a new tactical RPG born from the Final Fantasy Brave XBS universe. It is now available on the Apple App Store, Google Play, and the Amazon App Store. Due to the COVID-19 situation, uh, we are not shooting this video uh, from a studio. So we are recording this video remotely. Yep, and as always, we are very thrilled to be able to share more information with everybody for this month. Uh, in this video, we are going to be talking about the new campaign starting this week, an all new unit, and some other things we hope you will enjoy. Thank you, Justin. Let's get started. Uh, the Global Festival will be held from June 30th, later this month. During the Global Festival, Global Original Units Dwayne and Fravia will be available alongside the Vision Card Irresistible Darkness. This will be the third Global Festival since Dwayne was first released, but this time around, another new unit will be joining the fray. Check it out. I've made quite a name for myself. <laughs> it's all thanks to you. Now none can fest me in battle. I'm Zazan the Unkillable. <laughs> I've come a long way. Remember the name Zazan. I am unkillable! I am Zazan! War of the Visions. Final Fantasy. Brave Exodus. Yeah! Yay! <laughs> That's cool, yeah. No. The winner of first prize place in the character popularity poll, Zazan the Unkillable. He has been getting a lot of attention since his design was released. Now, let's introduce him. Zazan the Unkillable is an Earth type UR unit with a cost of 100. His exclusive main job, Undying Fighter, is a Vanguard Striker class job. In addition to KO recovery and evasion boosts, this job also features abilities that can deal high damage. His subjobs are Viking and Paladin, which are both also Vanguard class jobs. His limit burst, Undying Rampage, deals a large amount of damage to the target, significantly raises his own max HP for 3 turns, and recovers the amount of HP raised. His ability, Fake Death, allows him to come back to life one time with a small amount of HP after being KO'd embodying his nickname, The Unkillable. This is a versatile ability that can be put to use in all kinds of situations. Backbreaker deals a large amount of damage to the target and has a chance of inflicting Disable for three turns when attacking from behind. Opponents inflicted with Disable cannot perform any actions besides movement. Especially in PvP, this move can help you turn the tides of battle in your favor. If anyone is going to be sly and make sport of opponents from attacking from behind, it's Zazan. Triple Split raises his defense piercing rate before dealing 3 hit medium damage to the target in a manner similar to the ninja ability Dream Within a Dream, and it is able to deal high amounts of damage through the application of the debuff prior to attacking. Moreover, it can be enhanced to Triple Split Spinal Blow after unlocking Zazan's EX job allowing it to raise his defense piercing rate before dealing 3 hit large damage to the target and guarantee critical hits when attacking from behind. With guaranteed critical hits to amplify the large damage of each strike, this ability can inflict serious amounts of damage. His master ability, which enhances all fellow earth type attackers, raises earth unit allies max HP by 10% and adds 15 to their earth attack. Additionally, it raises Zazan's own slash resist piercing rate by 20 and evasion rate by 5. The all new Zazan with his high firepower, ability to return from the dead, evasion boosts, and strong attacks will undoubtedly shine on the front of the battlefield. This Zazan is a really great unit. Uh, some players might think it is difficult to train a cost 100 unit, but uh, there are summons with increased drop rate and Global Festival Medals to help with the, his training. 
so please check everything out. We will also be releasing training challenge missions for Zazan the Unkillable. These challenge missions will provide Zazan the Unkillable unit shards and other items useful for training him, so be sure to make use of them. Next up, EX jobs for Fravier and Duane will be released as well. First up, Fravia. Her main job, Spellblade, will be enhanced to Spellblade Guardian. Together with her sub-jobs, she makes for a solid magic tank with recovery capabilities. Magic Barrier will be changed to Attract Barrier, enhancing it to increase hate in addition to bestowing a barrier on herself that reduces magic damage three times. By raising her own hate, it becomes easier for her to attract enemy attacks. Furthermore, Taunting Spell will be enhanced to Spell Veil Blade. It will deal a medium amount of damage to targets within range based on Fravia's magic stat and also raises her defense and spirit for three turns, stacking up to three times. This will make her a tank capable of handling not only magic attacks but physical attacks as well. What's more, the support ability Providence of Wind will be enhanced to Wind Spirit's Ward. This ability originally raises magic attack resistance and wind resistance, but after enhancement it will additionally raise slash resistance as well. With this, she will become stronger against slash attacks, thus becoming a more capable vanguard tank. With enhanced defense, spirit, and slash resistance, along with the ability to draw enemy attacks by increasing her own hate, the new and improved Fravia is a unit to look forward to. Moving on, the vanguard striker Duane will also become stronger with his EX job. Upon unlocking his EX job, Duane's main job, Dark Knight of Remorse, will become Abyssal Dark Knight. The new ability Armor Crusher will be added. This ability lowers the target's slash resistance for three turns before dealing a medium amount of damage, making it a powerful ability that allows Dwayne to inflict damage on units even if they have slash resistance. Moving on, Darkness will be changed into Eternal Darkness. Eternal Darkness destroys any barrier that reduces physical damage on a target before dealing a medium amount of damage to targets within range, and it also has a chance of inflicting Disable for three turns. With this, the ability now destroys physical barriers before dealing damage. By destroying any barrier that reduces physical damage on the target, this ability is guaranteed to inflict damage in addition to being capable of protecting the rearguard by inflicting Disable. Next up, the support ability Knighthood will be changed into Paragon of the Knight. Since it raises not only defense but also slash and pierce resistance as well, Dwayne will be capable of dealing with even more units in battle. Cutting into the enemy line and making use of debuffs to protect one's allies is unmistakably a unique fighting style befitting of the Dark Swordsman Dwayne. And moving on, starting on July 7th, the story event Silence of the Songbirds will be released. It is a storyline set before Ramada joined Leonis' second division, Kalem. The equipment item Spineblade, obtainable from the event's high difficulty EX quest, boosts the wielder's defense piercing rate, making it a versatile and incredibly useful weapon. Equipping it to Dwayne would probably have some fearsome results. Please be sure to give these quests a try. And that concludes our introduction of the Global Festival units. So much Global Festival unit information. And there is still more new info to come. Next up, we have the release of Keton's EX job. Upon unlocking her EX job, Ketone's main ability Ninja will be changed into Ninja Mist Shadow. With her EX job, the new ability Debilitator will be added. This ability deals a minimal amount of damage and lowers the target's healing power and unit attack resistance for 3 turns, making it an effective move against units with high stamina and healing power. Additionally, Utsusemi will be changed into Utsusemi Shadow. The effects of raising Ketone's own missile and magic attack resistance for three turns will be added to the move's original effect of significantly raising her evasion rate for one turn. By raising her missile and magic attack resistance, it will become easier to gain ground on long distance attackers. And finally, Shadow Runner will be changed into Way of the Swift Shadows. By raising not only agility and luck, but also acquired AP and unit attack resistance, it will be possible for her to unleash powerful attacks in succession. Through not only lowering opposing units' healing power and unit attack resistance, but also raising Ketone's own unit attack resistance, missile resistance, and magic attack resistance, her relative durability increases. 
With her high agility and movement as an evasive attacker, Ketone's improvements are worth looking forward to. Okay, uh, this time we prepare our battle movie. So please take a look. Oh, so cool! Wow, that's a well a boy. We can end this battle. The power of healing. Not yet. <coughs> All right. Get ready. All right. Wow, nice chain. Wow, that's a avoid the game. So powerful! Just oh, get on well about it too! Let the blood flow! <laughs> get ready! Now it just happened. Let us finish! Whoa! Get on about it again! Let the blood flow! Oh, it's so hard. Are you alright? Apologies. You have my thanks. Wow, so powerful attack. Oh, so hard protection. I shall assist. Lending me a hand, are you? How are you? Attack is so strong too. Next up, we will introduce a new vision card. The Solitary Lion is set to debut as a new vision card. The Solitary Lion is a powerful vision card capable of strengthening Earth-type units. Its party ability raises Earth attack and accuracy for Earth-type units, as well as slash attack resist piercing rate when leveled up to its max level. Moreover, its limited bestowed effect raises slash attack and defense for Earth-type units, and though it, this comes with the slight limitation of lowering critical evasion rate, its overall increase to Earth attacks make it a very powerful card. Furthermore, with its global upgrade, it will raise the max HP of Mont Leonis when equipped, and it can also raise the luck and magic attack resistance of Zazan the Unkillable, so don't miss out. On to the next section, the Q&A corner! Yay! Yay! So, uh, in this section, we will answer questions we received from the players. So let's get to it. Here's the first question. Can we expect more ways to get Blossoms of Paradise in the future? Oh, Blossoms of Paradise are necessary for training EX Jelly. So we are aware they are in high demand. At present, uh, there are some ways to get them. This includes the drop in level 6 Arcaris Chambers and a challenge mission rewards. We are considering adding even more way to get them, uh, in which case we will notify everyone them. Okay, good news, thank you very much. And here's yeah. the second question. Uh, there have been some global original vision cards added. Is there any other global original content you'd like to add? Ah, yes. Uh, we are uh, always thinking of new global original content. Uh, we have, uh, we have various things uh, planned to be released with global seasonal events and more. We cannot give any details yet since we, will, we are still planning. 
but once we are close, we are closer to the east, uh, we will let everyone know uh, in a future video. Awesome. Thank you very much. And here is the final question. The EX jobs being released earlier or on a different schedule than Japan has been very well received. Is this something we can expect to continue happening? Uh, yeah, uh, we are very happy that everyone has liked this. Uh, World of the Vision features a high level of freedom when choosing party formations, but it can be a little complicated, especially uh, for global original content. We try to adjust the release timing so that unit and vision card are easy to use when they first come out. In fact, uh, because Dazan the Unkillable is an Earth type, we moved up the release of Kiton's EX job in order to make Earth type parties easier to make. We plan to make similar schedule adjustments in future so that everyone can enjoy the game. Please look forward to it. Please look forward to it. And thank you very much, Hiroki. If anyone has any questions, please post them in the comments section below and use the hashtag Q&A. Uh, our team takes a look at all the questions and we may answer them in a future video. So, Hiroki, do you remember how we asked our viewers last time for their recommended formations? Of course. Uh, I wonder how many con uh, contributions we received. <laughs> we received <laughs> quite a lot, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great. Thank you for your uh, contributions. Yep. And today, we'd like to introduce a portion of the formation recommendations that we received from the viewers. By the way, the theme we asked for for contributions was for units from Leonis. Uh, now let's introduce the formations. Here's the first one. This is a contribution from Langang M. King Mont Leonis, Elde Leonis, Lilith, Yerma, and Halloween Little Lila. It's quite an offensive team with a main tank, three unique attackers that can chain slash attacks, and one fast healer. It also consists of two elements that can complement each other's weaknesses to some extent and also can make some elemental chains too. Uh, thank you for the great contribution. Uh, little Lilith's uh, area attacks will be very useful. Uh, I think uh, this is a great formation for both story and event quest. I agree. Uh, since it's a team composed primarily of slash attack types and units of only two elements, fire and wind, it will be easy for them to form chains as well. Even against very strong enemies, one could look to deal heavy damage with the move like Yerma's EX job ability, Conquering Blow. Speaking of which, Ketone is a powerful slash attacker with her new EX job. You could also try swapping her in if you want to make an even stronger slash attack focused formation. Okay, now on to the next contribution. This is a contribution from Raul Elizondo. Mine would be Prince Mont. Ketone and Lilith, just because they are central in the story, which I love very much. I play using the Japanese voice acting, which I enjoy better than Global's. I know that can be controversial, however, I do love the story. Thank you. Thank you, Rao. I'm so grateful to hear that you are enjoying the story and voice acting. Mont and his two cross allies, Ketone and Lilith, are all great units. They will appear in the interlude and other content moving forward as well. So check them out there, too. Uh, Lilith will also be appearing in the story event Silence of the Songbirds starting next week. The event will provide a peek into her previously unknown past, so be sure to check it out. Okay, and now we have the final contribution. This contribution is from City Punk. Mont Leonis, Destined Prince, as a tank we need. Ketone for rapid deployment and enemy harassment tactics, Ildira for rear guard support in ranged magic based AoE damage dealer, as well as some magic tanking via her spellblade subjob, Lilith as a high endurance frontline ranger debuffer, lastly El Zarel for her heavy bruiser support capabilities. Thank you for your contribution, City Punk. Uh, this is a great formation with a good balance, especially uh, with 
Eudier sub job spell break. I can tell this formation was designed to uh, perform well in many situations. Speaking of subjobs, Ketone also has Soldier as a subjob. Its ability Drain Force deals a small amount of damage to the target based on Ketone's max HP, making it possible to attack while ignoring the opponent's defense or spirit. Try it out when Ketone's slash attacks aren't dealing enough damage, or when you just like to try a slightly different kind of formation. And thank you for your contributions everyone, we regret not having enough time to introduce all of them. But if you'd like to see what kind of formations other players are using, be sure to check out the comment section of the previous video. Now Hiroki, I'd like to ask for everyone's input again, uh, but what theme do you think we should ask them for this time? Uh, yeah. Uh, how about we ask everyone what party they will use for the light edition selection quest that were released on June 23rd. Okay, that sounds perfect. Uh, so here's the theme for this time. What parties are you using to challenge the light edition selection quests? If you'd like to contribute, please write out your party's formation and a description of its merits, then post it in the comment section of this video with the hashtag WOTVFormation. Contributed formations will be introduced in a future video. We look forward to seeing everyone's contribution. Yep. All right, and now we have one more announcement to make. On July 14th, a War of Divisions community livestream will be held on Square Enix's official Twitch channel. I heard that you will play with the influencers. By the way, uh, what kind of live stream is it? Uh, that's right, this is a live stream in which I will be the main host and the main speaker. Uh, some influencers will join the live stream and we'll take on events and discuss strategy together. In addition, we'll have presents prepared for all the viewers, so please be sure to check it out. Details, of course, will be posted on social media at a later date, so be on the lookout for those, and I hope to see every single person there. Okay, so time is almost up, but do you have anything you'd like to leave the players with before we finish, Hiroki? Yeah, I'm glad you ask. Uh, as is custom, we will give everyone special items to celebrate the release of this video. The details will be shown on your screen. Awesome, those look really good. Thank you as always, Hiroki. <laughs> we hope to see you again for next month's video. Yep, so make sure to tune in. And thank you everybody for watching this episode. And without further ado, bye-bye. Bye-bye.